on time shot now the face cam thing that was a complete experiment complete test i can't believe how well it was received like seriously a lot of people really 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 enjoyed it and i don't know why but i'm not complaining uh clearly so <laughs> i guess um it's here to stay for a little bit not not i'm not saying that it's going to be a thing that's always going to be here but you know, I don't mind doing it. Uh, no different than when I have a face cam when I stream. Uh, so there is a distinct possibility that it might uh, stick around for a while. Of course, the problem with it is that, you know, I can't be picking my nose all day long kind of thing. I can't be, uh, you know, it's not like I, I do anything makeup wise or hair wise or anything like that. But, you know, the there are days where even a guy might feel a little bit frumpy um, and might not want to appear on camera because it's a different d uh, dynamic. I have to, you know, look at you guys and <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing. I mean, I've, I've done kind of the Japan Crate vlog things where I sort of got used to talking into the camera and looking at the camera and things like that. Obviously, I've done streams before. Um, when I'm doing a stream, though, I tend to focus on the gameplay a lot more. And then, odd time, I look over here, uh, where, is, where the chat is. I very rarely look right into the camera. But I feel like if I'm doing a video where a face cam is involved, I have to at least be thinking about that, right? That's what the pros do, don't they? I don't know. I, what do I know? Uh, but in any case, it is something of a bit of a different dynamic. I don't know if I like it yet. It's something that uh, may go away just as quickly as it arrived. So, you know, thank you all to those who liked it. I, I seriously don't think I got any comments that said that they didn't like it. If you didn't like it, shut up. But if you did like it, thank you so much. <laughs> but seriously, it is uh, it is a different kind of way of making videos. I don't know that uh, I'm in the comfort zone of using it all the time yet. And uh, that's just from from a personal preference. You know, I don't. It's not like I'm shy. You know, I'm. There's a lot of people who realize that I don't get shy. I, I this is something. Shyness is something in my life that I did away with a very long time ago. Uh, back when I was in elementary school, I've talked about this in the past. But when I was in elementary school. I was always the shy kid. The quiet kid is what they said. He's so quiet. Um, in This is something the teachers always said. When they marked it, they had these report cards. Uh, of course, I was already in the generation. We talked about those millennials who don't actually get graded on anything. I was one of those millennials. I was one of those kids who, you know, you they, they put uh, the, the progress support rather than like a, a, B, a B, C, D, F grading or even on a percentage based grading uh, it was always like you got an eye for independent may need more work with group projects and stuff even then like I was I was thought as the shy kid the quiet kid and stuff I don't really believe that it was on account of me being shy necessarily it was just that I didn't like the people who I went to school with. Like, there's nothing... There's no rule that says that you have to enjoy the company of the children that you're in school with. I don't get that. And if you don't get along with those kids, why is it a bad thing? I mean, you know, I don't... Sure, you, you, you know, if you have co-workers, you should tend to try to get along with them. And even if you are still in school, you should try to get along with people. Um, at least to, to make it a smoother and more enjoyable environment. If you, if you go into work and you just loathe everybody there, 
um, and make it known that you don't want to do anything with them, you don't want to have anything to do with them, you're not going to have a very good time. And you you do want to try to make it better for yourself in that sense. So I, I get that. But, you know, there's these aren't my friends. I don't want to make friends of people who I just randomly meet in school. And I think that was always going on in my brain, even from when I was like a really, really like four-year-old kid. When I first, first, first went into kindergarten at the age of four, yeah, I made some friends, but it wasn't like, you know, I even and then said, like, why do I need to be friends with this person? Why, you know, they don't like the same things that I do necessarily. Why am I friends with you? I'm friends with you because I have to be, you know, that's what school's about. But it's not like I, I want to spend time with you. As you grow up, you realize that you can make your own friends. You can choose who your friends are. And that changes things. Anyway, I've never been a shy person um, necessarily, but I was often thought of as the shy, shy, quiet kid. Now, things have kind of changed in the opposite. You know, I made the decision. This was something that happened. I keep saying, like, you know, when, when people talk about being introverted and talk talk about having social anxiety and being scared of, of making waves or how they speak or maybe it's even something as, as extreme as public speaking, you know, standing up in front of a crowd in front of an audience and saying something that's written down on a piece of paper. People can't do that. People have trouble with that. They struggle with that. People have trouble answering a telephone and those kinds of things. And so they, they constantly say, well, I have social anxiety. I have, you know, I, I can't cope with, with talking to people, I get afraid of it. I have it's an irrational fear, I know, but I just can't do it. Um, I'm introverted. I have trouble speaking to people. I'm shy to people. You know, I think that in a lot of cases, and this is just, you know, I could be wrong. And not, I'm not saying every case. You know, some people genuinely have maybe something wrong up here. I'm not, I'm not using this this symbol as if you're crazy. It, this is just a me pointing at my head. Um, I'm saying that, you know, maybe there is something up here that is different than others. And that might affect the way that you interact with others. That is something that is genuinely a possibility. And that's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, you got to know yourself. Whereas other people out there, I do believe, have the ability to change. They have the ability to get more comfortable uh, out and about in the world, talking, interacting. It's something that you have to learn. And for me, it was something that I had to learn, too. Because although I, I don't think that I was ever inherently shy, I came off as being shy because I didn't want to go out of my way to meet new people. I didn't want to go out and hang out with friends, even. Uh, I often would make excuses to not go out and hang out. And, you know, if I'd get a call from friends and they'd say, hey, want to go see a movie? I'd make an excuse. Why? Because I would rather sit at home by myself playing a video game. And that was just me. Little did I know that I was actually, I think, waiting for friends that also played video games. Because I certainly don't mind hanging out with people now uh, in the communities that I'm in playing video games in my free time. And I don't tend to make excuses to get away from doing that. You know, if someone says to me, hey, you want to play a game? I'm not about to say no. Of course, I have I have something. I got that. I gotta get a a um a uh, I gotta get an eyeball removed. You know, I gotta. I can't do it today. Surgery or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I had a, a dinner plans with my mother. Can't. Can't. No, I I don't make excuses like that when it comes to video games. But I made excuses like that when it came to doing other social events with normal 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 friends. With friends that I had met at school or at work or and you know things like that. You want to go for dinner? No, I got something. I got a thing. I got a thing that I'm doing. You know, can't do it. I think it was just my own brain telling me that I needed to do other things and I needed to find people who had similar interests to mine. You know, if you find that you are more into just plugging away working on a car engine or something and you find yourself making excuses to not record videos or hang out with friends online or 
Uh, if you're not into the whole online community thing, maybe you are looking for excuses to not go to that movie theater with your friends. Maybe you're looking for excuses to not go to the mall or hang out and so on. And, you know, maybe that's just telling you that you have to find those friends out there that also like working on cars and also like working on those engines and stuff. Maybe that's your calling. Maybe that's what will find you joy, you know? I think that people need to try to figure that out for themselves because it might not be obvious at first. And once you find that thing that you enjoy doing, I think that it becomes a lot easier to open up and be yourself. And you realize that maybe you always had that ability. You, you weren't that shy, introverted person. You just needed a community of people that relate to you. So maybe that's it. But for me, it was more like I couldn't relate to anybody. And I decided, I just decided when I, it, beca it began actually when I went into high school. I went into a different high school than everybody else in my town that I had grown up with. They all went to one high school. I actually drove uh, about an hour out of my way to go to a school in the city. We were still living out in the country back then. Farmland area. Everybody went to a high school out in that area. Except me. I decided that I didn't want that for myself. Went to high school in the city. And it was a big jump. It was a big, you know, personal risk. I wasn't comfortable with it. But I decided that I wanted to do it anyway. And I'm, I'm very, very glad to this day that I did do it. Um... And I tried to open up a little bit then because, hey, people don't know who I am. People have, I can, I can be myself. I can, I can make me a new me. You know, I, maybe I could do the things that the popular kids do and become popular. And it actually, strangely, worked for a bit. Maybe half a year. I went to that high school and I, I actually was hanging out with all the cool kids. I was one of the popular clique. I was... Not so much a jock, but I did get into sports and stuff like that. The thing is, my real self caught up with that. And when I saw a group of people sitting there in the computer lab, enjoying video games, and enjoying computers and technology and programming and things like that, I, st I started like honing in on that. Which was really, really, really not what the other cool kids did, which was... Basically, they'd just go out and smoke and stuff and I in the back of the school. And I wasn't into that. I don't smoke. I never have, never will. And it's just, I, it wasn't my scene. I didn't want to have to any, anything to do with it. And so, you know, that became a, a rift between me and the people that I had tried to be, to, to emulate, to become. And... It was, again, just my brain telling me that you need to find who you are comfortable with. So I kind of was, was outcast in high school at that point because, you know, I had started making friends with the, the cool kids. And in doing that, alienated myself from the more geekier kids that I enjoyed spending time with. And... When I tried to say, okay, well, maybe, you know, I want to spend more time with those kids who are into the video games and computers and stuff. That alienated myself from the popular kids who I had tried making friends with. So I didn't have a good time of it, I'll say that much. But when I went into college, when I entered university, it was sort of the same thing all over again. Like I could finally say, okay... I'm I'm new me my again. Where is this guy even from? Where did he come from? Where did he spawn? Oh, he must have spawned in right in here. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Ooh, wrong block. But I could be a new me my uh myself. I could be a new me myself and I could be a new me again. And this time I chose to be myself, you know. And I got it in my head that if someone didn't like who I was, 
that I really didn't care because I no longer was trying to be, I was no longer trying to hang out with or be the people that I saw around me. I was trying to be myself. And if I saw someone who had similar interests to me, those are the kinds of people I would as associate myself with. And I never really bothered worrying about how people perceived me because it didn't matter if they didn't uh meet my expectations of of what a friend was then it didn't really matter to me if they didn't like me if that makes any sense i know that that sounds kind of confusing but think about it this way like if if you're not trying to impress a group of people then why should you care if they're not impressed with you and I think that kind of realization tweaked something. And I started realizing that, you know, I don't care if someone thinks that I'm I'm a nerd. I don't care if somebody doesn't like the my sense of humor. I don't care if people don't like the way that I look. I don't care because those aren't the people that I'm trying to impress in life. Those aren't the people I'm trying to affiliate myself with in life. A genuine friend will never care that you look a certain way or that you are interested in a certain thing because more than likely they'll be interested in the same thing as you. And if they're not, are they all that good of a friend? I, you know, I, that's the thing. I think sometimes people need to step back and evaluate who they are affiliated with and, and why. And is it affecting the way that you act and the way that you behave and is this the person that you you want to be is this you you know i that i think is is really 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 important to try to figure out for yourself cuz i mean i get those kinds of comments from time to time from people saying like how how do i be more confident how do i find how do i find confidence how do i deal with depression how do i deal with these big life issues that keep me introverted and keep me shy and keep me without friends how come i don't have friends how do i get friends and stuff and my biggest piece of advice has always been just be yourself and yeah maybe maybe you're not going to find friends where you're currently looking but that doesn't mean that you'll never find those friends and i mean it's it's easy for me to say right but i was definitely, and I've said this before too, I can remember previous episodes go far back where I have said, like I, when I was growing up and I was getting those report cards with the eye for independent and I was not clicking with people socially and I had trouble when I was, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old, finding a girlfriend and I thought to myself, well, what girl in the world would ever want to hang out with a troglodyte like me, you know? That's the kind of perception that I had, because that's kind of the way that everybody else perceived me. And I always thought that it was hopeless. But when I found that confidence, when I stopped caring about being close with the people who hate me then the friends came naturally it was never an issue and it hasn't been since finding the friends is easy when you realize that you don't have to look for them they sort of just find you because in doing what you love you're going to be in those kinds of communities especially in this digital age you're going to be in those communities with the people that you love and you'll find either that special someone or those friends that really bond with you. And what can I say? It's, it's not rocket science. It's not difficult. Just don't give up so easily, you know? So that's my advice to anybody who's listening and, and has any of those kinds of questions. And I know that there are those who have asked them in the past, you know, how do I find friends? How do I became, become more confident? How do I stop my depression? Depression is often tied in with all of this too. Um, because as funny as it sounds, and it's not funny, I realize, but as, as 
weird as it is, more often than not, depression is tied to being alone. And we're not necessarily talking about clinical depression, but sometimes all that a person needs in their life is a friend, someone to lean on, someone to depend on, and when you really have difficulty finding that person if you don't have that kind of person or people in your life uh the depression starts to sink in you start feeling like you're overwhelmed because you don't have anybody to to rely on or hit up or or talk to so more often than not that confidence thing that ability to be yourself and find those friends and you know make a name for yourself in your own community it solves a lot of these depression issues as well. And I'm not necessarily talking about personal experience. I don't ever think that I was really depressed. Everybody has down times and when they kind of self-hate. Um, and certainly when I was in high school and stuff, like I said, I you know I never thought that I would meet somebody. I never thought that I'd have friends that I could relate to. There was certainly a little bit of self-hate in that. There, were, there had to be. Um, but it was something that I knew was a solvable issue. It was something that could be fixed. And it did get fixed. I went into that university. And everything changed. Everything did. Um, I was myself. I made friends. But even then, you know, I don't... I don't think that there's a single person from my university days that I've still had contact with because I was able to grow and I still made that same decision. I mean, maybe my, my old college friends are not that happy with it, but you know, selfishly, if you want to call it that, I thought about myself above them uh, in that, you know, if I wasn't enjoying hanging out with them, if I didn't enjoy... Um, the same activities that they did, I wasn't going to hang out with them. You know, I'm going to go and find my own community and be myself and be happy in that community. So the question that I get, like I said, was how do I become confident? And sometimes, this is what I'm telling you, is that your situation that you're in, whether it's that you are just surrounded by coworkers that you don't really know, Maybe you're in high school or elementary school and or college even, and you don't know anybody around you. You don't like the same things that anybody around you has, and you feel like, well, that makes me shy. That makes me not have confidence to be, you know, open and loud. And I want to, I want to laugh like that group of friends is. And you know, sometimes, you know, the sad truth is that you'll never connect with those people. And it's just, it's not a bad thing, but you got to realize that that might be the case. That it's not that you're doing anything wrong. It's not that there's anything wrong with you. That you have confidence and you can be a confident person. Just not with the people that you're around, you know. So, I think that there's something to be said about that kind of way of thinking as well. That, you know, yeah, maybe I'm not confident because I just can't get along with anybody. Yeah, but... You don't, there's nothing ever telling you that you need to get along with everybody. That's not a rule of the world. You don't need to get along with every single person you meet. And if you don't get along with them, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It just means that you aren't connecting with them the way that you would with a friend. And that's something that you need to clue into. Especially when it comes to people who you think are your friends right now. You know? So... With all of that said, like, why am I bringing all this up? I, I really don't know. I just feel like with this whole webcam thing, it made me again realize and evaluate what I do, how I do it. And I think, you know, I look at my confidence to be able to, you know, I... What is my hair even doing? I don't, I don't know. It needs a haircut. I know that much. But I don't care... Don't take this personally. I don't care if you're out there and you don't like how I look. It's just not something that's going to trouble my day ever. And 
I mean, if you're that kind of person where you really care about the way a complete stranger looks, you kind of have to reevaluate your morals, I think. But beside that, I don't care if someone doesn't like how I look. Conversely, I don't really care if you really like how I look. <laughs> it's it's I can't help that. It's not something that I can help. I'm not going to brag about how I look if I look good. I'm not going to complain about how I look if I don't think I look good. I am who I am. And that's not going to change. And I think that uh, it doesn't trouble me at all. So that's something that, you know, if you're not in that place, I hope you do get to that place. It's an interesting place to be. Because I can now sit here and make this kind of content without it becoming an issue. Not a lot of you might remember, but some of you will, that when I first, first started doing streaming, this is probably even going back years now. I was on Twitch, I think. I didn't like doing face cam. In fact, almost none of my streams had face cam. Almost none of my streams had face cam. Just think about that for a second. Right now, all of my streams have face cam. And reason being that it's just something that I'm comfortable doing. I know that other people enjoy it. And if someone doesn't enjoy it, I really don't care. And that's part of that confidence, sure. But what I'm saying to you guys and what I've said this whole video is that confidence is, is something that I've had to learn. It's something that I had to kind of train myself for and when I clicked that thing in my brain it did alter things it made me realize you know I can I can get by being myself yes that does in, implicate that you might get bullied I'm this is the thing that happened to me I was bullied a lot I don't talk about bullying a lot. I know that some people have asked me about it. Uh, I was bullied a lot. Um, I was that kid from all of those... You watch any 80s teen drama movie. And I was the kid who had his clothes stolen while working in gym class. You know, you, you go to gym class, you change into your gym clothes. They would steal my clothes and... And I don't know what they'd do with them, but, you know, you'd never see them again. And then you'd have to spend the rest of your day. You either have to go home and change, which I lived an hour away, so difficult. Or you spend the rest of your day in stinky, sweaty gym clothes, mocked by the people who just took your clothes. That was me. That was me in, in school. I was bullied for no reason except that... Well, it's hard to say why people are bullied. But I assume it was because I was different. And because, like I said, I, I did alienate myself a lot in trying to find who I was. And I think that, yeah, it's something that I had to deal with. It helped make me who I am. Helped put things into perspective. That... Sometimes life doesn't give you everything that you you want it to. But you roll with the punches. And at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter what happens to you. What embarrassment you go through. When you're older and wiser, you will be shaped by the things that have happened to you. Either to the point where you won't let it happen to others. Or you'll advocate for it to stop. I know that for sure, you know, I I wish that when I was younger I had the strength maybe to ask for help when it came to bullying and stuff, but it was something that I just wanted to deal with on my own that happens. I don't remember anybody from high school. I don't remember anybody even from college these days. They, the people who bullied me in high school and in elementary school even a little bit, they don't matter to me and will never matter to me. I don't remember their names. They 
are not even a footnote in the history of my life, except that I can mention that, yes, I was bullied. And that doesn't m amount to a lot, you know. I think that people do put a lot of emphasis on that kind of stuff. But, you know, and it's unfortunate that it happens. I don't know how to really prevent it either. Except to tell people that you will get through it. You will. You will get through it. And like I just said, you know, it won't even be a footnote in your history. It's nothing that you should be ashamed of. It's nothing that you should be depressed about. It should not be something that you would even self-harm about. It's not a big deal. I've been through it. There have been hundreds, thousands of people who have been through it. I think that if you talked to every single person, line them up, talk to every single person who had ever, ever, ever been bullied in school. Talk to them now, 20 years later, 10 years later, 20 years later, talk to them now. And I don't think a single one of them would say that it affected their lives negatively in the long run. I think that a lot of them, in fact, would say that they benefit from it, that somehow, some way they were able to overcome adversity by being stronger because they were bullied. So I don't know how we really got on that topic, but it's, it's all kind of, you know, it's interlocking. It's all part of the same conversation, finding that confidence, being yourself. Yes, there will be people out there who genuinely just hate you for no reason, except that you are yourself. But those aren't the people you're impressing. Those aren't the, that's not a reason to be introverted and shy uh, for fear that you might get bullied. It's going to happen. It might happen. It might not, you know, but in the long run, the sooner you realize that you are yourself <laughs> and the sooner you appreciate yourself, the sooner you'll be able to realize that no matter what someone says or does to you, it doesn't matter. And in the long run, you'll be way happier for it. Have 20 times the friends as they do for it. And, you know, that's, that's all that I can really say about that. You know, I think about the, the people who might've bullied me in high school. They are probably still living in that very small town, working at a gas station and their best friends are still their best friends from high school. The four or five that they might've hung out with. Meanwhile, I've got confidence to be myself. I'm in online communities where I have 20, 30, 40 friends, maybe more, not including all of the people who watch my videos and appreciate my content. So it just goes to show you that, you know, if you're yourself, finding those things in your life won't be difficult. It will come. You will succeed. And don't let anybody else take you down for it, you know? So, that's all that I really had to say. I don't know why this whole conversation came It's because of the face cam, right? Oh, and I fixed the sync issue, I think. I think. I noticed in the first the first episode, the, the last episode, that the audio for my webcam was a little bit out of sync. And I guess it's been like that for every live stream, too. But I don't watch my own live streams. I watched the video, and it bothered me that it was out. So I tweaked it by literally 150 milliseconds. 150 milliseconds is not a lot. It's like a tenth of a second here. Made the world a difference, I think. I think. I'm going to... Maybe it's still out of sync. Maybe I need to work on it still a little bit more. I don't know. But I'll keep tweaking it. It seems better. I think it's better. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Whew, what an interesting talk. Confidence, huh? Very weird that we started talking. This is not what I started. This is not. I gotta tell you. When I first, first, first hit start recording, I had something completely, completely different to talk about. But that's just kind of the way that it goes sometimes. And I'm not regretting that. I don't regret that. Um I really enjoy talking about that. If you have if you have any questions either about bullying or confidence or maybe you want to just share your thoughts or your experiences talking about being yourself, maybe struggles being yourself. 
whether or not you feel that you can overcome your introvertedness if you have intro introvertedness. If you're an extrovert, maybe you could imbue some knowledge to others. What do you do to become so extroverted? Was it natural? If it was natural, why do you think that is? What makes people different? What what makes you extroverted and another person not? What do you think that is? Let me know in the comments below. I'm interested in this whole conversation uh, personally and, and just for my own curiosity's sake. Let me know. Curious to see. But with that, we'll see you next time <laughs> on Time Shot. Bye-bye.